Well, 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 everybody. <laughs> the arena and indoor football scene has gotten a little bit crazy. Um, at least for the lower level leagues. I'm not going to talk about, you know, any NAL sightings. I know there was one, but I don't have, you know, that. Uh, I don't really have anything to say about that sighting just yet. Uh, we'll get more into that in, like, February, I guess. You know, when it comes to um, the arena indoor scene, and I'll, I'll try and discuss, you know, a lot of these sightings then. But for now, for now, this will be the first update video. I'm sure there's going to be a second update in January, like there has been the last few months. But what I did not see coming was uh, Magnolia State joining the AFA. Now, they said they were a member of the AAL for the longest time, and yet, um, obviously things did not work out the way that it intended, so I guess I, I don't know what happened. I really don't know, and I really, uh, and I guess I'm dumb because uh, Magnolia State, you know, meant Mississippi, and I did not realize that, I did not realize that meant Mississippi. I was, look, I was looking, because I mean, the logo has the state in it, I was like, I'm confused, so... Oh uh, yeah, that's just me being completely clueless to the situation. But what I do know is that um, the Magnolia State guys have said that they will be taking on North Texas, the North Texas Bulls, in their first game. There's no schedule out yet, so the AFA has teams in Texas and Mississippi, you know, not... Not ideal, because I mean, you know, there's nobody in Louisiana or anything like that because you know, you've got to gotta know your geography for these things and that doesn't scream good geography. I have no clue what happens to Texas crew. They were not listed on the all the little release. Well, I mean, it was kind of a release, but it doesn't look like the Texas crew are going to be a thing, I guess. So there, there was a little logo release thing that Magnolia did as well. Um, uh, so, yeah, th there's that with the AFA, that's really the only thing I can say. What I found, what I actually found, you can go to Waco Tornado's Facebook page, they are headed to the AL2. Now, if you know what the AL2 is, we talked about that last month, and, um, yeah, this is like the, this is the only team that I know of. That's in the AAL2. I was looking for something for the January update video, this video right here, and that that's the only thing I can find with the AAL2. Um, again, the Waco Tornadoes, they, I don't know what they play in, but it's not a particularly safe or good environment that they do play in, and, you know, uh, from what I do know, because I, I think I've looked at some images in the past, but I've just completely ignored them because of how bad the turf quality and stuff was. Uh, but the Tornadoes, they're in the AAL2 apparently. And so what is the, what, who's left in the AAL? Who's really left? Um, it doesn't look like the Music City Fire are a thing. Um, they haven't posted since February of 2021, and that was just them, you know, backing out of the season. So they haven't posted anything in quite some time. The Austin Wild also looks like they're dead. They were they never played, I don't think. So the AAL is down to the Jersey Flight, who we know just went back to the AAL, you know, last, you know, last month. The Jersey Bearcats, who, you know, are, you know, owned by one of the owners and the West Michigan Ironmen who, who, um, you know, there was a long time representative at the 50 yard um, shit posting discord, you know, but now he's no longer part of the West Michigan Ironmen. So I have no idea what West Michigan's doing at this point. I haven't seen anything from them either in quite some time. Could potentially, there is a potential, you know, that the West Texas Buccaneers are back in this league and there is a lot of backlash about that. You could go, there's like a Facebook post about it. You know, somebody has claimed that the West Texas Buccaneers are heading back to the AAL. I have no idea how true that is, but that, that's the only post. I think it's like in the AAL forum on Facebook, so go f check that out. Um, so again, I think the AAL is down to four teams, and 
And the reason why I say that is because there are teams in other, you know, lower level leagues that I haven't talked about, you know, like the NFA, um, the National Football Association, where the Indianapolis Enforcers and the Chicago Power are. And I believe one of the Enforcers owners is actually an owner of the AAL, so I, I really don't know there. Um, but Chicago Power were listed as an AAL member back in 2020 and 2021, but they're in the NFA now. Teams that, you know, were you know, added to the conglomerate under Tony Z in the um, in the AAL before, like Western Maryland, the Warriors, they're part of the uh, major indoor football league now. So, you know, th those teams, you know, those teams, those leagues, I haven't talked about those leagues because there's really nothing for me to talk about because, I mean, there's just, they just, it's just not the level of publicity that the other leagues have had. I mean, they're, they're much harder to... You know to try and find information about and let's talk about elite indoor football i know i haven't said anything about this league at all because it is also a league that is you know just as bad as the al probably worse actually now they added the bay area generals the tampa generals and that uh I, I don't, I don't know what this means. I really don't know what this means. That now the EIF has, you know, been doing some shady, shady things, you know, for the longest time now. I don't know how they continue to claim that they completed seasons, but they have not. Um, they also added the Peach State Cats. That's where Peach State will be going. Um, I've been following the updates there for the EIF. I have no idea how many more teams they've added, but this is the list that I have currently. Um, I'm assuming the Reading Raptors are returning. They haven't posted in quite some time either. Um, they all, the EAF also stated that the Atlanta Furious, the Southern Renegades are coming back, and of course the self-proclaimed two-time champions, Southern Steam, the, really the team that owns this league. In, in all honesty, you know, like the Idaho Horsemen owns the AWFC, you know. So... Elite Indoor Football is doing their thing. Not really a good thing, but it's their thing. Peach Day, I don't know why they're back in. I don't know why they're in this league. You know, obviously they needed somewhere to go since the UAL died off. I have no idea what happened to George Alina. I guess they're dead. And we know that the uh, Federated Arena League thing that Palmito's doing, that's what they're doing. And that's probably going nowhere, in all honesty. So... Elite Indoor Football, that's what they're doing. Um, they might have added some more while I was not looking. You know, but I mean, it is what it is with the EIF. Because, I mean, their, their site is god-awful. Like, it, it looks god-awful. Like, it looks like it has been updated in quite some time. So, I mean, when you go there, there's just a bunch of things wrong with it. So, it is what it is, man. So, that's going to do it for our update for... Um, January for at least for now there might be some more information later that I'll dig around and find in my spare time but for now that's gonna do it that's gonna do it y'all take care I'll see you all soon when it comes to the NFL baby yes